Now let's build the search time navigator. Come to the search time navigator. We'll start by importing the tab navigator from React Navigation. We'll get rid of the class here. And we'll create our tab navigator. First tab will be the search tab. The screen for that will be the search tab. The second will be the favorites tab. And the screen for that will also be called the favorites tab. Let's import these two tabs. In fact, let's create these two tabs first. So coming to the search folder, let's create a new folder called the tab navigator. Inside the tab navigator, we'll create two files, search tab.js and favorites tab.js. Let's import these two files into our search tab navigator. This should be called search tab over here. And let's customize the tab navigator right now. So firstly here what we'll say is tab bar position. We'll say bottom. And the next property will be the tab bar components, which allows us to customize the tab navigator. Here we can return the custom components of the tab navigator. For this, we'll import some components from native base. So we'll import footer, footer tab, and button from native base. Here in the return, we have the footer, which is a parent element. Inside that, we have the footer tab. And inside that we have the buttons. So I've just created the two buttons. Inside the button we'll create a property called vertical. This ensures that the text comes below the icon in the tab navigator. And we'll add an icon, call that beer. and text and call that search. In the second button again, we'll set the property to vertical. Icon name equal to star for our favorites and text equal to favorites. Let's refresh this here. And obviously right now our search tab and our favorites tabs are empty. That's why we're getting this error. So let's just add some boilerplate code here like we did earlier. We'll just call this search tab. Let's not return anything. And here, let's call this favorites tab. And just return our text. Favorites. And as you can see over here, we forgot to import, export the stack nav, search tab navigator. There we can see the app is opening up. If we click on search pairs, oh, we have another error here, which is because in the search tab navigator, we forgot to import icon. So let's import that from native base. Let that refresh. Click on search pairs. There, it takes us to the tab navigator where we have the search tab and the favorites tab. Right now, if you click on these tabs, we see that nothing happens. For that, we just need to add two lines of code here. So firstly, it'll be active is equal to props.navigation state dot index equal to zero. And we'll add an on press on this.
to the search tab. We'll just copy this, add it to this button, and we'll make the index one. And here we'll make this the favorite step. The index for this to be active is zero, and the index for this to be active is one. And when we click on this, it takes us to the search tab. When we click on this, it takes us to the favorites tab. There we see that the search tab is active. If you click on the favorites tab, the favorites tab is active and we see the text in front of us. I just realized we could zoom it to make it look a little better. So let's come to the search tab now. Here firstly, let's get rid of the header. We don't need that here as well. So with the static navigation options, And we'll say header is null. Next, let's import some components from native base. So we imported the container and content from native base. And here we put in a container. Inside which we'll have a content. Here above the content, we'll import a search header, which we'll create in a separate file. So let's create that file. Inside the search folder, let's create the file called search header. And let's import some boilerplate code. So now we have a search header. Before we build on the search header, let's do one thing. Come to the app.js and here the initial route currently is the home screen which is usually the first screen in the stack navigator. Let's change the initial route to the search tab navigator while we're working on it. So that's easy. It's easier for us to test out the changes. So let's say initial route name and let's call that search tab navigator. So you save that out automatically we open up the search tab navigator. Coming back to the search tab to the search header sorry. On top, we'll import some components from native base. Header, icon, item, and uh, input. Get rid of the view here. Put in a header. The header should be of type search bar and the edges should be rounded. Inside this, let's put in an item. We'll have an icon of name iOS search. An input. And we need to also set the height of the header for it to be visible. So we'll just add an inline style. It says height of 80. And let's import the search header into the search tab. Let's import search header. Search header. And let's put that in here. Now we see we've got the search header on top. So here in the search tab, let's add our logic to make the search. Here let's create a state. And let's call the first one search beer. Another one called beer data. In the search header, we'll pass in some props. The first will be the value, which will be equal to this dot state dot search beer. The second will be on change text, which will take the data that's entered and update the state. Let's save this, come to the search header, inside the input, put a placeholder, which says enter be your name. Set the return key type to search. Put in the on change text method, which will call the 
on change text of the parent using the props because we shouldn't be changing the state inside a child component. So right now we have a placeholder. We have, if we enter anything inside over here, it'll update the state, which is the state over here of search bear. We have to put in a method and also, yeah, and also when we click on this field here, it brings up a button here, which has search instead of okay, which is what we got from putting in the return key type. Next, we need to enable the search. So here, let's put in a method here, which is gonna be called on submit editing. This is a prop of the input type. And this will call a method in the parents, which in the parent, which is going to be called this dot props dot beer search. So we'll set that here. Beer search. When beer search is called is called. When beer search is called, it'll call the beer search method, which we'll create. So we'll create this method here. We'll just say search for beer. So let's test this out. Let's just enter any beer name here. And we click on search. It says alerts search for beer. So just to clarify this, we have a search header, which is a custom component created by us. We have certain props that we're passing down to our input field. The first one is value on change text and then beer search. The input field has an onChange text method by default. When it detects a change in the text, it calls the onChange text method of the parent, which is here, which in turn runs this function to update the state. Similarly, when we click on search here on the keyboard, on submit editing is called, which is a default method of the input field, which in turn calls this dot props dot beer search beer search is mentioned here as a prop which in turn points to the beer search method clear created here the repetition of the names might be causing some confusion so i thought i'd clarify it so now let's create the beer search method first let's import another component from react native it's called keyboard the moment the user clicks on search we first want to hide the keyboard so we'll say keyboard dot dismiss Next, we'll create a constant called beer name. And we'll convert the enter text into lowercase. Next, we need to make the get request to the brewery DB database. So let's see how we're going to set that up. Here we are on the brewery.db website. You have to create a new account here. Once you create a new account, you can go to developers here. Click on start developing now and register a new app. So app name is called find beer. Find the latest and greatest beers. We leave the website empty and platform. We'll just call it iOS for now and we register it. So there we get an API key, which we can use. From the API documentation, we can find out how to search for beers. So the base URL that we need is this here, api.brewerydb.com slash v2 slash the key should be passed. Along with this, we need to look for the endpoint for searching the beers. Come into search over here. And if you come to the example over here, what we need is search. We need a query type, which is mandatory, which will be the name of the beer. And we need the type, which is beer in our case. So I've already copied the query that we need. So the query turns out to be this part, which is mandatory till V2. Thereafter, we want to search. We want a query type of the beer name that the user entered. And the type has to be beer. And along with that, we've entered the key. Next, let's use Axios to search for the beer. So we'll say axios.get, pass in the query, dot then, we get the response and then we work on the response. So let's just console or log the response. And I'll just show you what it is. If you search for Corona, 
and we forgot to import Axios. So here we'll say import Axios from Axios and then let's try that again. So there we see we get a lot of data back but we need to filter out the data that we need. So if you come here, you get an object which has the configuration of the request that's received. What we need is we need to go into the data. So firstly, we go one level lower. Inside that, again, we need to go into the data where we can access this array of objects. So we need to go inside two levels of the returned object. From there, we can get the details of the peer. So what we need to do is we need to get the data by saying response.data.data go into the first element of the array and see if that exists if that exists then you return that else the user entered a beer that is not found and then let's console.log the data so there we see we've got the data of the beer is giving us everything, the description, the name, the name display, the status. We're only worried about a certain things that we want to show. Depending on what you want for your app, you can show the rest of the data as well.